Hey folks, Edgar B. Herwick III here from GBH's Curiosity Desk, where you ask questions and I find answers. Today, how did this 12-foot bronze pair end up at one of Dorchester's busiest intersections? If there are two things you cannot spit without hitting in this town, it's a Dunkin' Donuts and a historic statue. Now, most of them are pretty by the book. Paul Revere atop his horse in the North End, Martyr for Religious Freedom Mary Dyer sitting contemplatively outside the State House, Celtics coach Red Auerbach chomping on a cigar on a bench in Quincy Market. But artist Laura Baringould had a completely different kind of statue in mind for this spot in Dorchester, Boston's most diverse neighborhood. An enormous pear. Doing public art is always a tricky endeavor because who's the public? What's the public? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a small, randomly selected, non-statistically significant sample of the public. Do you have a theory as to why they put a giant pear here? There's a book called James and the Giant Peach, and the mayor in 1963 read the book and decided to uh, one-up it. I don't know, it's, 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 it's doing his job. It's doing his job. I passed by with my granddaughter, and she asked me about this pair, and I don't have an answer. I say, I don't know what does that mean. I would like to know what is that. All right, are you going to tell me why we have it here now? Pears were once grown in abundance here, and one variety was actually created here by a guy named Thaddeus Clapp. Now, he took a Bartlett pear and crossed it with a Flemish beauty to create a brand new pear unique to Dorchester. The variety was aptly named Clapp's Favorite. But that's not the only reason for this enormous fruit. Baring Gould settled on this pear idea after months of research and countless conversations with people all around the neighborhood that revealed a rich agricultural heritage here that cuts across culture, class, and time. I see in the Vietnamese communities people growing cucumbers in their gardens. And then as you cross over the Cape Verdean communities, people are growing beans. She also learned about the neighborhood's 17th century farms, its 19th century orchards, and saw tons of 20th century photos of kids playing in front yard fruit trees. And it could also be this unlikely symbol. What's a pear doing in Dorchester? Why a pear? Around the pear are 10 smaller sculptures honoring Dorchester's unique history through everyday objects. There's the Three Sisters crops, squash, corn, and beans, vital to the area's indigenous peoples. There's dog tags honoring local veterans, a triple-decker house, and more. But it is the pear that looms largest here, and Baring Gould sees it as a fitting metaphor for Dorchester, a sweet, tough-skinned hybrid fruit, something wholly new, only made possible by cross-pollination. Thank God, now I, I, I know what, what I'm gonna say to my granddaughter. So, there you have it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and perhaps most importantly, let me know what you are curious about, because hey, I might just look into it for you. I'm Edgar B. Herwick III. Stay curious out there. Oh, it's pretty good. This is a tasty pear.